السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم ایس اینڈ ویلکم ٹو یو ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان وی گیٹنگ انٹو لیکچر نمبر 32 آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی 624 آئی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ کمیونیکیشن اٹس امپورٹنس اینڈ دی ایسنس آف کمیونیکیشن ان دی پریویس لیکچر وی آل نو دیٹ ٹو دی بیسک آبجیکٹو آف کمیونیکیشن از ٹو کریٹ اویئرنیس مینٹین دیٹ اویئرنیس اینڈ دین میک شیور that consumers make the final decision, the meaning go for the final action in favor of your brand. I also talked about uh, the essence of uh, the process of uh, the communication, which uh, starts with awareness and uh, passing through so many different steps, it culminates at uh, the action and then referral. And I also talked about uh, the one fact that uh, the process of communication, the once you have understood this, and once it is kicked off, uh, evokes certain responses on part of the customers and consumers. What are those uh, responses we are going to learn in this lecture? There is something which is known as uh, the customer response hierarchy or customer response effects which um, take place in ascending order with the one after the other and I'm going to explain that to you with the help of a graphic illustration. You can see from the illustration that uh, the customer response effects with the start with uh, the first stage which is awareness and this also ends at uh, what you call action. So whereas uh, the essence of uh, the process of uh, the communication also starts with uh, awareness and uh, the ends at action the, by the same token the customer response effects with the meaning the the responses the which uh, are evoked with the, by that process of communication also starts with uh, the stage of awareness and ends at action and uh, the in between awareness and action could we have uh, the two more stages um, which is comprehension and then intention So, in ascending order, we, we can see from this illustration, starting with awareness, on to comprehension, then on to intention, and then on to action. And these are the four stages which uh, are uh, the basic determinants of uh, the response effects on part of the consumers. In the very first stage, uh, we create awareness, and uh, this illustration shows that uh, you have kicked off a campaign uh, which uh, has succeeded in creating uh, awareness on part of 75% of your target market. Because whenever you kick off a campaign, you also should get into uh, some kind of market research, uh, however small and um, the brief it may be, but uh, it should be able to provide you with uh, some kind of feedback Uh, which uh, throws light on uh, the effort that you have undertaken and the results of that effort which either should be reinforced or uh, they should be improved. 75% of the target market is aware of your brand and uh, which means automatically that 25% of the target market is not aware of the brand. The next stage uh, which uh, this uh, illustration that shows us is that of comprehension and uh, we can see from here that uh, of the 75% consumers uh, within the target market, 80% of them do comprehend what the brand is, what the communication is all about, meaning they do understand the benefits which uh, the product carries and uh, the value which um, it uh, offers. Now again you see this is uh, on uh, your part that you've got to make sure and determine that they do fully understand what the values of the brand are and what benefits the brand really offers. Because if there are any gaps here, you will have to make some adjustments with your campaign. After the comprehension stage, we have the stage of the intention. The meaning this is the stage where you can measure the response effects of your campaign in terms of consumers intention either to buy or not to buy. Uh, well according to this illustration 70% of the people who 
have very good comprehension of the brand do have uh, an intention to go for the brand meaning they will buy it and this automatically means that uh, the 30 percent of uh, the, the population does not really uh, have any intention to go for the brand why is that well it is upon you to find out through your customer models through market research through you know your contacts with the marketplace so on and so forth and uh, the final uh, response effect of course is uh, the action itself which uh, the consumers could must take in order to buy your brand and uh, we can see from this illustration that uh, of the 70 percent of the population okay, which uh, has every intention to okay, buy the brand 90 percent okay, that have taken the action to buy the brand and uh, it was only okay, the 10 percent okay, out of the intended ones okay, who somehow at the last moment decided not to go for the brand this is a stage okay, which is very thought provoking and also okay, action provoking in the meaning there's got to be some action on your part to determine okay, why is it that those you know, who really intended to go for the brand did not go for it. Like the meaning they could have gone for the competition and uh, what are the reasons that uh, at the, the final moment they decided to opt for competition instead of your brand. All I can say is uh, that uh, the communication uh, is extremely important for any brand to gain a decent level of uh, success in the marketplace and uh, the empirical evidence uh, shows that um, not many brands uh, without advertising or without communication have been uh, successful in the marketplace. There are a uh, few statements that we can make about uh, the communication and about uh, the controlling uh, this uh, strategic intent of the, the overall marketing strategy and those uh, the statements are that uh, there has to be uh, some kind of communication for uh, every brand that appears on the market and uh, the method of communication uh, should be uh, very direct uh, just like uh, the advertising and number two statement that we can make is that uh, there can be the uh, ways other than the advertising but the, whatever those ways are those ways also have to be direct and simple, which uh, really reach very convincingly with your intended target market. The third statement that we can make about communications is that uh, the all means of communication and um, the strategies that you have at your disposal that have got to be very well coordinated and uh, the whatever communication message whether you are transmitting uh, to the target market through any communication vehicle or communication tool has got to carry the same essence and uh, it's got to mean the same. It just cannot be that you are talking about one thing through advertising and uh, about another through promotions and yet about another if you go for some kind of uh, event marketing. The, the message has got to be very well coordinated and uh, it is because of this reason that uh, when you take a look at uh, the advertising of uh, the good brands and powerful brands uh, you see the same thing in the television commercial and uh, the same kind of message colors and slogans appear on uh, the hoardings and uh, exactly the identical uh, the manifestations that you see um, in the press if uh, you, you know, really go for things which are kind of diverse and which do not really converge on one single point, then the power of um, the, the communication campaign is going to be undermined and good chances are that uh, the communication campaign may not succeed. These are the fundamentals which basically form um, uh, the basis for uh, a brand-based communication strategy. Uh, the, what that uh, the communication uh, strategy is and uh, the how does that fit into the brand strategy, uh, let us uh, the talk about that. And let us talk about that with the help of three guiding principles. I will talk about these principles one by one, but uh, before that, let us 
see the, what these principles are. Number one is that uh, we have to use a combination of all communication uh, tools and communication strategies. Meaning that we have uh, the part advertising, part promotion, and uh, the part event marketing. If at all, we're going to go for that and part this and part that. So it has got to be a mixed bag of uh, the different strategic tools. Advertising could be, you know, the heaviest among those or maybe promotion is going to be the heaviest among those. It all depends on your strategic situation and your strategic goals and your resources in particular. Number two, uh, the principle, which is a very, very important principle, is that uh, all communication strategies uh, are going to be driven uh, basically by the brand promise, meaning the brand picture and uh, the brand positioning. And number three, a guiding principle is that uh, all the uh, communication strategies have got to be very well knit and well integrated so that they all talk about the same thing, so that they can appear to you as stemming from one common platform, which is the platform of the brand picture which you developed and the brand positioning with which you created. And that is the brand position with which you intend to uh, occupy uh, into the minds of the consumers. And that is what you are working for. So these are uh, the three the guiding principles that, um, uh, that have been derived out of uh, the, all the elements that uh, the I've talked uh, about so far. And uh, the brand strategy or the communication strategy as part of the brand strategy uh, basically stems from these principles. In other words, these principles must guide our communication strategy. Now, before I start talking about uh, these principles in a little detail, let us see how these principles are uh, related to the hierarchy of uh, customer response effects. The reason I call, um, I mean, the, the marketing experts call it uh, hierarchy of uh, response effects because uh, it does happen in a hierarchical fashion. It ascends and uh, it goes from down position to an up position and that up position is the position where consumers take the final action of buying. So it is a hierarchy. Let us see how these principles relate to uh, different uh, phases of or different responses on that hierarchy. Uh, because the total framework of um, your uh, strategic intent in relation to communication strategies is going to depend on that hierarchy. Why? Because uh, if you're a new brand, you're out to create a lot of awareness and uh, your campaign is going to be the center around uh, that awareness objective. If your brand is an established one, you're going to just remind the consumers of your brand. So in other words, you are reinforcing the message and you are reminding them. If uh, you think you know, there is a gap between uh, uh, the comprehension and the final action, so maybe there is something wrong with uh, the brand persona and uh, there is something which you've got to do to make your consumers understand what the product really is about, what are the associations which you are trying to develop, and what is the brand personality and the character and the traits which your customers and consumers must conjure up when they think about your brand. So these are the kind of responses which you have to look at and then relate these with the position of your brand and you must know the way your brand stands. So wherever your brand stands at that hierarchy, you have to create a campaign accordingly. I hope it is clear. If it is awareness, then you see that you are at the bottom of the hierarchy. If it is comprehension, it is a step further. If it is intention, it is a step even further. If it is action, it is the final step and you keep on reminding the customers over and over again that we do exist and this is what we are all about 
and why don't you go buy and they will if your brand is powerful and if your strategies are well knit and well integrated so in other words all the tools that you're going to have at your disposal are going to be decided upon after you have looked into the strategic situation in relation to those responses or response effects I hope it is clear by now after being very mindful of uh, the stage or the response effect of uh, the hierarchy we must then determine the objectives of the communication strategy accordingly this is something we are clear about and that is something which is going to generate the final action so in other words if a marketing communication fails to reach its target customers and create awareness these successive steps of the hierarchy will not emerge that is the conclusion of this discussion so far and if a marketing communication strategy fails to uh, develop the uh, successive responses you have to do something about the next response effect if you have succeeded in uh, generating uh, that effect in a positive way then you worry about the next one and the next one so you have to develop you know these relationships and uh, study the market at every successive phase and stage of the response hierarchy each stage in other words lays the foundation for the next one and that is how you become very clear as to where we stand and what should be the strategic intent of the campaign that you are wanting to kick off let me try to explain the whole concept of response effects or hierarchy of response effects with the help of a few examples and uh, I'm going to talk about examples uh, which uh, I've taken from uh, the textbook which uh, you uh, must have gone through or at least the handouts uh, which do talk about these examples and since you know, these are uh, very well recorded uh, into the marketing history I do not feel kind of hesitated to, to talk about the brand names first of all let us talk about the world famous glasses uh, which uh, we are all fond of and um, these glasses uh, basically are or have been uh, meant for uh, the male market all over the world and these glasses uh, uh, always carried the, uh, the promise of uh, being very high quality and uh, the, uh, the promise of uh, uh, being very modern and the promise of uh, being very masculine because uh, these are basically limited to the, the masculine market a time came when um, uh, sales started slipping and uh, the, despite the fact that uh, the brand was uh, the very well known all over the world uh, the, the manufacturers or the brand managers uh, became worried as to the why is it that uh, the, all of a sudden sales are slipping because uh, the, we are uh, the maintaining the brand picture and uh, the, we know uh, the, what the brand persona is and uh, the brand is very well positioned the awareness is there comprehension is there intention is there so why is it that uh, the final action is not taking place when they carried out their market research they found out that uh, it basically was a gap between the uh, brand persona and the final action where the gap was well the gap was all about positioning meaning uh, the market was looking upon that brand or perceiving that brand as limited to just males and not only males but males of a certain age the youngsters thought the glasses were not really meant for them females thought the glasses were not really meant for them so it was uh, it gave the management a lot of food for thought they immediately changed the brand persona and uh, reposition the brand uh, with an appeal uh, for not only their existing customers but also uh, for their potential customers uh, who were uh, from those segments 
who refused to buy those glasses, meaning youngsters and also females. The uh, new persona that was created was that of modern and very up-to-date, intelligent and appealing to all the kind of glasses. And glasses, you know, which were full of confidence that uh, they really had an appeal for, the, for all those segments. And the result was that the strategy worked very well and uh, the new brand persona which the company created um, with the intention of uh, challenging uh, perception of their uh, the consumers really worked in the marketplace and uh, the glasses were back on track all over again. Strategy worked. So this is one example of um, the gap between um, the, the brand persona and um, uh, the final action which the consumers uh, they were not taking. Let me give you another uh, convincing example uh, which, is, uh, which you will find in many uh, the marketing books relating brand management. And that is about uh, one of the, the world-renowned cars which you see on the streets uh, of uh, almost every country in the world. It was back in 1997 that uh, this uh, the car manufacturer realized uh, that there was a drop in sales in the luxury car segment uh, which was uh, very well uh, focused on the performance. And uh, this car manufacturer, uh, just like the manufacturer of uh, the glasses, thought to itself, uh, how is it that uh, the car sales have registered a drop, uh, whereas the awareness, the reputation and uh, the brand personality and uh, the brand positioning, uh, everything seems to be in place. And still, you know, the sales are the dropping. Why is that? Well, the results of uh, the marketing research that are brought to the surface, the one fact, and that fact was all about customers not being reminded of uh, the position which the brand uh, occupied and not being reminded of uh, the manufacturer's uh, the vigor and manufacturer's the willingness to the communicate with uh, the customers all the time, and that only was the reason. So what happened was that the company did not do anything with positioning. The company did not do anything with uh, the, the set of promises. The company did not do anything with uh, the brand personality, or for that matter, brand persona. The company only did one thing, and that one thing was that it kicked off a campaign reminding the customers of one thing about which the car was known and that was performance. So the company kicked off that campaign with a beautiful slogan which is very well known, world renowned and uh, I mean performance focused, performance centered. It only was a matter of reminding uh, the customers and reinforcing the message that uh, the sales came back on track and uh, the company witnessed a growth. And from there on, the company, like they say, never looked back. And uh, I think the company the does kick off that kind of a campaign uh, from time to time. So these are uh, the two examples which um, very convincingly explain the relationship of your uh, the marketing uh, strategy or the basis of your communication strategy, to be very precise, uh, with the response effects. Whether it is a problem at the awareness level or is it a problem at the comprehension level or is it a problem at the intention level or is it a problem at the action level. So once you really have pinpointed and identified the problem in relation to the response effect, you are all set to create and craft a beautiful strategy which really is going to guarantee success in the marketplace. Um, in relation to glasses and in relation to the car that you have seen and how the companies fulfilled the requisite needs in terms of um, kicking off uh, the right kind of campaign and uh, those really worked for those two companies and uh, those campaigns uh, they challenged the, the perceptions of uh, their customers, uh, which um, they were changing a little bit, 
and uh, those uh, the perceptions which company uh, which the two companies uh, wanted retained in their customers minds were reinstated and reinforced so uh, in the case of uh, the glasses uh, to summarize it was a case of uh, gap between uh, uh, the brand persona and uh, the final action whereas in case of uh, the car it was only a question of reminding the target market so with uh, so much explanation with the help of examples i think uh, the strategic relationship with uh, the response effects has got to be very clear in our minds let us now talk about the guiding principles the one by one because our understanding of the guiding principles is going to be very clear with the help of the examples which i already have talked about talking about uh, terminologies and uh, just the strategic intent uh, without the help of uh, the examples which i have given uh, may become a little difficult so i do hope that uh, we uh, will pick up uh, the, the 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 strategies and the strategic uh, the requirements in relation to these principles uh, very quickly uh, the ones we are clear about these examples the first principle that uh, we have to use all communication strategies to achieve our overall uh, corporate strategy this uh, relates to uh, the combination of different communication strategies and uh, the like i already have explained we have got to be uh, very clear about the uh, strategic intent and the clarity about strategic intent uh, that comes to us uh, by way of being very clear about the response effects and uh, the stage uh, of the hierarchy uh, where we stand uh, because from there uh, we start crafting our strategies and it is from there that we become very clear uh, how much of advertising how much of promotion and like i said earlier how much of this and how much of that the mixed bag of uh, the communication strategies that you come up with in other words has got to be very compatible with the strategic vision the brand vision and the brand picture and the overall goals any deviation here of your uh, strategy with uh, meaning a combination of strategies uh, which of course have got to be well integrated and well coordinated with the basic strategic elements which i just uh, talked about meaning the brand vision the strategic vision and the goals is going to cause some problems and it is here that you reaffirm the support of the top management and it is here that you have to have uh, all the resources in place uh, with the timetable um, for execution of the strategies the time frame which you have to yourself um, has got to be very realistic the results which you're going to see uh, as a consequence of um, the communication strategies they will not come to you overnight so the time frame which you set to yourselves that has got to be very uh, realistic and uh, based on uh, certain solid logic the amount of time in other words is of essence the important point which uh, we must not uh, forget here is that uh, the overall uh, the objective remains the same that is awareness comprehension retention action and uh, every guiding principle has got to relate to one of the phases or stages of that hierarchy principle number two is uh, like i said earlier brand picture and brand positioning are the ones which drive our strategies i think it is very obvious that uh, it is the, the basic set of promises uh, which um, are based on the benefits you're going to deliver and what you're going to deliver uh, forms the contract with which uh, you have not signed with your customers and consumers but which is there um, for the consumers to perceive and uh, the, the moment you deviate they know that you have breached the contract and they never talk in those terms that the contract is breached no they know something is wrong with the brand and uh, this brand 
always delivered this kind of a promise, meaning the service was so good that it, it was available anywhere. And I could just uh, go in and pick it from uh, the nearest store. It is no longer available. So that is a breach of contract. So brand promise and brand contract and brand picture, with all the concepts about which we are so very clear about, are the ones with which must drive this communication strategy. And um, if the communication strategy uh, deviates from the essence of uh, these uh, strategic elements, the strategy is not going to work. Now, this has to, all this has to work uh, in integration with the brand positioning. Because uh, brand promise or brand contract or brand picture for that matter is for the present. You already have it. And you are very clear about uh, delivering it. Uh, and that confidence okay, makes you uh, feel that you are going to be a winner. No question about that. But then the positioning upon which the communication strategy is also depending on relates the future. Because position is something that you have to you still have to create in his or her mind. Uh, so therefore, uh, the brand picture along with brand positioning are the two factors which um, really drive your communication strategies. We shall become even more clear about brand picture and positioning when we start talking about different tools, uh, advertising in particular, how ads are developed and what are the considerations when you develop those and how you reach your target market so on and so forth but for the time being I think the understanding should be good enough when I talk about the importance of the brand picture and the brand positioning as the basis of your communication strategy if the brand has not been able to evoke the right associations and customers uh, they cannot uh, really develop the kind of uh, picture in their minds and therefore uh, they are at a loss to develop a persona which is intended, then uh, you know there's a gap. And uh, this is the kind of gap which uh, was so comprehensively explained to you with the help of two examples. And that is why I talked about the examples before I started talking about the guiding principles. So that's the perspective which uh, we must understand and we must take uh, while uh, we craft our communication strategies. Only that will uh, help you achieve the intended position in the marketplace. And uh, if you have uh, succeeded in uh, registering in the minds of consumers the position with which is intended, with which you think uh, that must occupy the consumer mind, I think that's a great success. And that what is the whole exercise uh, is all about. And then it only is a question of uh, reminding them and reinforcing the message to whatever is going to be the combination best suited to your strategic situation. I still would like to give you another example of um, a company which is known the world over through its uh, printers, with which we all use in our offices, also at homes, attached with our computers. This company, a few years ago, started facing a problem, and the problem always is declining sales. Don't forget one thing, that uh, the communication strategies or for that matter, any marketing strategies are basically meant to achieve our goals. And goals are very strategic in terms of uh, some solid results. And the first result any company uh, likes to see is the sales. If it has good sales, it has, the chances are, it will have good profitability. So the first indication about uh, a communication strategy or for that matter any other marketing strategy being good or being not good is a decline in sales. So this company uh, started witnessing uh, sales a few, year, a few years back and um, it really wanted to find out what really had gone wrong because the company knew it is known all over the world 
and uh, the position this company has in the minds of uh, its customers the world over is uh, very compatible with um, the technical uh, the power which the company has and um, the strategies which uh, it had been and it has been uh, kicking off always uh, worked. So what all of a sudden has uh, gone wrong with um, product? The results of uh, the marketing research showed that the company was too decentralized and too fragmented in terms of making their strategies and in terms of executing their strategies. So probably there was no uh, the one uh, the department or there was no uh, the one mechanism which really could ensure the centralization in terms of uh, the message which should have been and could have been delivered in a very well integrated way. And I will take you back to the one of the um, the basic elements and the guiding principles that uh, any communication campaign kind of has to deliver the same message. The whatever is the combination of uh, the, your uh, uh, the campaign, uh, the, all the tools and all the elements that have got to carry the same the message. So probably because of the fragmentation and uh, the decentralization uh, which company uh, must have carried out in relation to some other very creative and the convincing uh, management strategy. The communication strategy they did not seem to be working. The company reassured itself that uh, the brand persona the in the minds of the, the customers was still that of um, innovative, reliable and very scientific. So uh, when customers thought that this company uh, makes uh, products which are very scientific and uh, which are based on innovation, uh, they come up with uh, the beautiful, reliable products every now and then because that's what uh, the company does. So why is it that uh, the sales have gone down? Well, the results showed that it was because of a lack of integration and a lack of coordination between and among different the units of the company which were working quite independently in terms of these communication strategies. The moment they put everything together and integrated the whole thing to bring all the strategies together, the company started witnessing a rebound and the sales again started showing a positive growing trend. So this is an example of the significance of having a campaign which is very well integrated and um, which uh, carries the same the message. And uh, in relation to this uh, the example, I'm going to talk about the guiding principle number three that uh, we have to have integrated marketing communication strategy. And I think with the help of this example, the strategy should be very clear because this is what experience has shown us that advertising and promotions, when they're used together by carrying a message which is just about the same everywhere and anywhere the impact they create is compounded and um, the reasons are uh, the common sense based a mix of uh, all communications uh, the carrying the same message that has got to have uh, a bigger punch and impact than uh, the fragmented uh, the strategies and fragmented tools uh, here and there so it is uh, to be taken in, in a very synergistic light, as you might have learned in uh, the one of the, uh, the management courses. But you have to create synergies whereby you can really optimize uh, your uh, the marketing results and uh, also uh, not end up wasting your money. All the tools and all the strategies have got to be the mutually inclusive and the mutually consistent so that they can complement each other. Complementing each other leads to the cumulative impact in the minds of the customers and in a very coherent way. So that's the level of coherence which you have to create in the minds of the consumers and that level of coherence is created when the, the message is very impactful 
and uh, the impactfulness uh, that comes through integration of your communication strategies and not through fragmentation. And fragmentation, when it occurs at uh, the kind of um, unrelated, unconnected, and uh, disparate times and time frames, they do not really create the kind of impact with which uh, the campaigns, with which are well integrated in terms of all kinds of efforts and also in terms of time have. This integration has to come through certain solid methods and uh, the methods which are uh, proven are uh, number one that uh, you must look for uh, all the opportunities, the possible opportunities uh, to blend the various uh, the communication tools. That is method number one. And let me remind you that I still am talking about the, the overall guiding principle number three which calls for the integration of uh, all the uh, marketing uh, communication campaigns. So method number one in relation to this communication strategy is that uh, we have to look for uh, all the possible communication tools that can be brought together to create the kind of punch that we are looking for. Number two is that uh, we have to ensure that uh, the message is uh, transmitted very consistently. The message is not only the same but it is uh, transmitted very consistently and in a way that it carries an impact. A message which is spread over a very long period of time may lose its impact in comparison with a, math, with a message that is delivered within a short period of time but repeated very frequently. So this is something that you have to look into before you make your decision. But the lesson is consistency and frequency. Number three is uh, that you have to uh, track all the expenditure. I would uh, pay a lot of emphasis uh, on this because this is an area again within communications with which you are going to be responsible the moment you uh, enter the practical field. You are going to be attached with uh, the brand managers and the marketing managers as their assistants and uh, be required to uh, work on um, budget making. Uh, dealing with the ad agencies and dealing with all the suppliers who are going to supply you different uh, the promotional materials and so on and so forth. So what you're supposed to be doing is you must relate expenditure with every tool that you are going to use for your communication strategy. And um, you must then measure the results of those tools in relation to the expenditure with which you envisaged and then see how your performance has been and uh, on the basis of that you make further decisions whether you should be bringing about any improvement um, or any adjustments within the uh, tactical execution that is taking place as part of the strategy. In other words, these uh, the methods, uh, the four methods that I've just talked about really lead you to consider all the possible tools at your disposal to communicate your positioning directly with your customers. You make sure nothing is left uncovered and that basically is the objective of communication. Getting back to the question of expenditures or let me say a few things about the budgeting because I do believe you are they're going to be a part of uh, the budget making immediately upon your landing into the, the department of uh, the marketing and brand management. It involves a very sensitive question uh, here, how these uh, the budgets are made and uh, what are the allocations and how those allocations are made. You must know how the whole process works. But before you develop an understanding of uh, the budgets and budget making, be clear about uh, the one thing that uh, the point of departure for all that is the situation analysis. And it is the same situation analysis which I talked about in one of my lectures earlier that you've got to know where you are, where the company stands and um, in light of the strategy which you already have uh, in place, where you really want to reach and why you want to reach there. 
because answers to all these questions are going to provide you with uh, the rightmost for the dissection of the situation for you to make the rightmost decisions about uh, the right combination of your communication strategies. The, the next thing which you must consider is the, the objective, of course, and uh, the overall objectives are the things which you never lose sight of wherever you are within the process of uh, strategic management. Not only brand management, but strategic management in its totality because the whole company is working for the same objectives. Uh, once you are uh, clear about uh, these uh, two things, the next question is how these appropriations are made. The method which is uh, generally followed by uh, most of the companies uh, in the world is that uh, you always allocate uh, the part of your uh, sales revenue to your marketing budgets. Now, there are uh, many uh, the marketing experts uh, who object to this method because uh, they look upon this method as something uh, which is uh, driven by sales, uh, whereas uh, they think that uh, it has to be vice versa, meaning communication strategies should be the one that drive uh, sales and not sales that should drive communication strategies. But the fact of the matter is that this is the way it happens to be and uh, the most of the, the companies are following this practice. What you are to be mindful of is the fact that uh, you must work very closely with, uh, with the sales people, the meaning the sales managers and the sales officers in order to uh, master the, the sales forecasting that done by those people. And uh, based on that sales forecasting and the revenues uh, which are being uh, projected and envisaged, uh, you start working on those appropriations, meaning uh, what percent of sales is going to be allocated to a combination of different communication strategies. Uh, what is going to go to advertising, what is going to promotions, and uh, you break uh, all those uh, expenditures uh, into different levels and then sub levels and uh, relate those with uh, the different uh, departments and sections uh, within the not only department of marketing but also others uh, if uh, the relationships with the transcend uh, the marketing boundaries the objective here is to make sure that uh, you are very clear about what you're going to spend and you're very clear about the time frame the time limit which you have defined to yourselves so that uh, you can achieve those objectives very uh, realistically. Uh, anything which is uh, overly ambitious and is reflected uh, in the budget making is going to backfire. So you've got to be very practical about that. Uh, take uh, your colleagues uh, into confidence, listen to their uh, viewpoint, and uh, then go for something which is very well integrated, not only in terms of uh, the communication strategies, but in terms of uh, overall for the management strategies. Like I was talking about uh, into the need for integrating your communication strategies, the fact is that uh, the total strategic framework of the company, marketing management, production management, financial management, operations, any management, they've got to be very well integrated and uh, you've got to start training yourself in a way that you end up as a beautiful team player who really uh, subscribes to the, the idea of integration, whatever is the field. Uh, having talked about uh, advertising and importance and elements and uh, the response effects in particular and uh, how those uh, response effects um, are related to your uh, strategic intent at any given point in time is the the main learning of today and uh, I will repeat that uh, whenever you uh, craft a communication strategy for a new brand, for an established brand, uh, whatever may be the case, you've got to be very clear about the hierarchy of response effects and then start crafting your strategies. The chances are you will not go wrong. Like they say, it doesn't really take a genius to craft a strategy. Even if you are an average person and you understand the brand picture well and you have uh, created the brand positioning right, the chances are you will not go wrong. With this, 
I could bring this lecture to an end. And uh, in the next lecture, I'm, I'm going to start talking about the tools of the advertising, which I talked about in earlier in my lecture of today, um, meaning advertising, promotions, event marketing, and all those things. And the reason I'm going to talk about those tools, like I explained earlier again, that I really want you to have a very good understanding of uh, the strategic intent and the strategic frameworks that uh, you develop um, in order to use those tools. So unless you know uh, how these strategies come into being, uh, understanding about the tools is not going to be as productive. So Allah Hafiz, until the next lecture, I look forward to talking with you then.